This is a really fun build. This is a custom six string bass guitar that I made for my new friend Alex. And uh, I made it out of some locally sourced elm and a piece of reclaimed mahogany. This is actually a piece of maple that I'm cutting right now, but I in reality used elm for the build and prepared it in the same fashion where I've created one straight edge and then used that straight edge to square up the board. I get wood like this from a place called City Bench that is local to me and they mill trees that are in cities and other inconvenient places where traditionally they would just get chopped up for firewood. That's what I used to get my camera in focus, so now you know why it's never in focus. <laughs> This mahogany is very interesting. It came from my friend Jordan Bland, and he had gotten a whole bunch of these big, huge pieces that are, as you can see, subtly shaped. And what they were are molds for the automotive industry. So they were molding plastics or whatever around these blocks of mahogany. I assume they use mahogany because it's very stable, um, but it's just beautiful, beautiful stuff and these huge blocks of it with hardly any marks. Um, so I was very excited to make an instrument out of this. I've been saving it for just the right build and this was definitely the one. It would have been nice to have sliced the block the long way to have left it as continuous pieces of mahogany, but I just didn't have the tooling to do that. Um, if I used the chainsaw, there would have been too much waste and my bandsaw was just too small. So I had to cut it up into these smaller pieces and then do a glue up, which would actually probably make it more stable anyways. The instrument's going to be a semi-hollow, so I also did a half inch thick piece to make the top and then the bottom of it will get carved out. You don't need a CNC to do this type of woodworking. It can be done by hand, um, but with a CNC you do a lot of the planning on the computer first and then finish it by hand. And I've recently become infatuated with CNC woodworking and I have this beautiful Avid CNC machine. Um, so I designed these files in Vectric and then I did cut some, t some uh, prototypes out out of some MDF to check them before going to the real deal. But you can see I have these subtle curves in the shape of the body and that could all be done by hand and it's not difficult. Um, but it does take time and um, it takes time to get it consistent and even. But with the machine I can sort of dial it in and go. Where the machine really comes in handy is for repetition. So now if I were to make another one of these, these files are ready to go and I don't have to do any of that design work again. I wanted to make sure that the edges were perfectly flush before I glued them together, so I did this sort of weirdly suggestive sanding. I apologize for that. And I realized while I was sanding that I did make a pretty big mistake in my CNC file. I forgot to put a cavity in the back for access to the electronics so I could wire it, because once it's glued up, I wouldn't have access. So I had to do that the old-fashioned way. Which was a little tricky because the wood was curved and whatnot, so I had to sort of jig it and set it up and it took a few minutes to line it up, but... It wasn't too big of a deal. I used some of the cutoff from the top, which is some nice thin stuff. Cut it out of my laser into a circle real quick to fit it in, and then I just hand sanded that in to fit the radius of the instrument. I used some sacrificial screws to hold it in place, sanded them down, and then used new screws when I put the base together. And I took some measurements and realized that it wasn't quite deep enough in there, so I did have to hog away a little bit of material to make room for the parts. The client's vision was to have a six string bass that was like a, a beetle bass or a fiddle bass, whatever you want to call it, which, um, I've never seen one on the market, and uh, he wanted it to be semi-hollow if possible. He just wanted a single pickup, something very very simple and warm sounding. In our back and forth planning and discussion, I came up with this idea of doing like a solid core that fit into the semi-hollow body and making them two separate contrasting pieces. And then I took it a little bit further and I actually made the, sec the center piece slightly longer so it sticks out of the back to accentuate the fact that it fit in. We'd even discussed possibly 
making it something that was removable, but that didn't work out because of electronics and whatnot. But I also pictured it all being very rounded and curvy and low and sleek, and uh, so that was the look we were going for. This is the first time I've made a six-string bass, and I wanted to make sure the neck was stable, so I put two truss rods plus some carbon fiber down the center to uh, give it plenty of strength, because there's a lot of tension on this instrument with all six of those big, heavy strings pulling on it. This was also the first time I had ever played a six-string bass, uh, and it's, it's interesting, it's unique, and it's totally different than a normal four-string bass guitar. It's like a whole different instrument. Um, I think I get it. <laughs> That's why you only use beater chisels for this. cut the fingerboard for some reclaimed kumaru decking, which is also known as Brazilian mahogany and sometimes Brazilian teak, and I was hoping it would, you know, kind of match the dark color of the dark part of the body, which it doesn't match perfectly, but it's in the same family at least. But this is a nice hard wood, uh, and it makes a pretty good fingerboard. I've made a lot out of them. And when Jordan had sent me that big block of mahogany, he had also sent me some new old stock veneers that are really kind of dried out and cracky. Um, but I was able to get some cool little green pieces out for position markers on the fingerboard. I just used CA glue to put them in place. I'm still pretty slow at fretting. I have a lot to learn and I don't have all the right tools like that's the wrong size uh, press for this radius. But um, on this build, I, I felt the need to put a little bit of CA glue in to hold the frets. And I just, instead of trying to carefully get the CA glue in the grooves, instead I soaked the entire fingerboard in CA glue and used it as like a, um, a finish, which, you know, a lot of pen makers do and stuff. And it actually worked really well. I liked how it sort of filled in and tightened up the grain. Uh, it was definitely stinky in there, though, while I was doing it. I made that fretting hammer myself out of a piece of scrap brass and an old drumstick, so <laughs> I love that thing. And then um, there's always little spots here and there on the edge of the frets that look funny, so I mixed some wood glue and some sawdust and filled those in. multiple multiple layers of gluing to put this instrument together and I also wanted to do something special on the headstock to make it match the mahogany body. It's all really about those those two contrasting colors so with some more of that veneer I made this little faceplate. And um, now in here the way the base is designed I needed to recess the six string bridge into the body um, because I have everything very low and flush to the instrument. But you'll see later that that green is gone and it's replaced with mahogany. I ended up having to route that pocket a little bit deeper, so I lost that green veneer and I was all out of green. But honestly, I think it looks better with the mahogany, um, which you'll see later. The glue up took a while because uh, I had to clean up from one glue up before I could do the next and uh, and then just kind of really think about each step and plan it before I glued it and doing one at a time and whatnot but um it all came together pretty good I think that now that I've done one I would probably do some things differently on the next one in the order of operation but it all came together okay For the next operation, I'm using the Arbortech Mini Turbo and Contour Sander. 
this part of the neck joint I intentionally didn't try to carve on the CNC machine because I knew I could do it by hand with the Arbor Tech uh, and I would do it to feel because that's one of those spots on a guitar that's pretty personal and uh, I do I end up doing a lot of that I have a basic neck shape and then I, I go in and hand finish it uh, myself to make it feel right of course there's some spots here and there that needed to be filled in uh, sawdust and, and wood glue I don't know why people buy wood filler <laughs> It was tough to get that seam to be like perfectly straight and even, but I think it came out okay. <laughs> After what felt like a lifetime of sanding, um, I wanted to knock down a couple frets that I saw that were high before I went and strung it up and started doing all my fret work. I used Rubio Mono Coat for the finish. Uh, this is not sponsored, um, but this stuff is very expensive, but a little does go a long way. And it gives you like a real natural finish. It's low VOC and eco-friendly, which is good for me. I try to keep my shop that way. It goes on real quick and easy, and it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you don't have the ability or space to spray finishes on, and you like that sort of natural look and feel. In the next scene, you'll see that I had rerouted that pocket. I put a little black paint around it and then put a new veneer in to put underneath the bridge. And you will see Dennis, who is visiting us from China, <laughs> and my son Vance uh, hogging the camera there. Now, before I did any of this, I cut this top for a pickup out of mahogany, and I gave it a slight radius and sent it off to my friend Rob over at Gemini Pickups, who winds almost all the pickups I use now. Rob is great because I can give him words like warm and fat and punchy, and then he can wind the pickup to achieve the sound that the specific musician who's ordering the instrument wants. Check him out, Rob, GeminiPickups.com. And here's the finished pickup. It's absolutely beautiful. I've been into zero frets lately, so that's a stainless steel zero fret so it'll last longer. And then I have a little scrap of ebony that I carved a string holder out of to put behind it. This base is screaming for wood knobs, so I cut some from the elm cutoffs of the centerpiece. And notice how I recessed it a little bit on the inside, and that's so it can sit over that nut a tiny bit. Uh, and I also just drilled a set screw in it to hold it nice and tight. I got these at the box store, and you just twist it in with an Allen key. I let it thread itself in the wood. that heavy six string neck and head and a light body and no upper bout to put the strap out far I was concerned about head dive with this instrument and uh, it's surprisingly not bad if you wear a non-slippery strap it sits on your body pretty well so that was a huge win This was a custom build for a client. Uh, he had a basic idea of what he wanted and we put our heads together and we came up with this pretty unique design that um, I'm really proud of and I think he's gonna enjoy for years to come. Thank you very much for watching. You can learn more about what I do on my YouTube channel as well as at newperspectivesmusic.com. Be good.